in the year 20XX AD. Mega Man has managed to preserve world peace by defeating the evil Dr. Wily once again. But only a few months after Mega Man's latest victory over the evil scientist, eight robots claiming to be working for Dr. Wily started a revolt, plunging the world into chaos once again. I swear, Thomas, I didn't want this to happen! I don't know what caused my robots to go berserk! Uh, please, please, let's work together and we can fix this horrible mistake! Alright. It seemed Dr. Wily was sincere, for once, so both he and Dr. Light got to work. Looks like some other force is controlling your machines, Albert. But I can't even begin to fathom what it could be. Oh. Rock! Ah, Albert! Help! No! Mega Man, go after Wily's kidnapper. He's the key to solving this mystery. Right, I'm on it. Next Mega Man. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play Mega Man Unlimited. Not counting Capcom's Mega Man 11, which is coming out soon, and anything else they decide to do, Mega Man Unlimited is the last classic era Mega Man game that I had planned to play. After this, I was going to move on to other things. Not X immediately, but eventually I would move on to the X series. But this is it. This is the very last Mega Man game I wanted to cover. This is a fan project created by Mega Phil X. You can check out his website in the link in the description. This is... <clears throat> you know, I'll just cut to the chase. This is easily the greatest Mega Man fan game I've ever played in my life. And I've played a few of them. And a lot of them were really good. Street Fighter X, Mega Man, Mega Man 2.5D... Mega Maker is also pretty good. The good levels are good anyway. Uh, this is fantastic, though. This is just... This is the most official Mega Man fan game ever, and this is the last roster of robots until Mega Man 11. We have Tank Man, Nail Man, Glue Man, Yo-Yo Man, Comet Woman, Rainbow Man, Tri-Nitro Man, and Jet Man. This is the most official Mega Man game I've ever played that isn't actually an official Mega Man game. Practically perfect in almost every way that counts. Um, this game is really impressive, and I've been following it since the very beginning, and I played it when it first came out, and I went back to it a few years later after a few of the updates came out, and this game just got even better and better and better, and it's, it's fantastic, and I just wanted to show it off because this is the best Mega Man game that a lot of people don't know about because obviously it's not an official Mega Man game, but it's as official as it's going to get, at least until Mega Man 11 comes out. Mega Man Unlimited was a five-year project. Clearly, as you will be seeing throughout this playthrough, it was a project of love. These people were very clearly Mega Man fans, from level design to enemy design to music to bosses to the plot. People that made this game very obviously cared about Mega Man. And that shows, and it's why this is such a good product. Um, <clears throat> it's totally free, by the way, if you go to the website that's in the link in the description. Uh, this game is totally free to download and play and enjoy to your heart's content. There's no no hidden fees, no nothing. This is a fan project, non-profit. Totally worth your time. <sighs> okay, well, I'm saying it's price is enough. Let me talk about the one thing about this game that I don't like, and then we'll move on to talk about the levels and the bosses and all that stuff. Um, so far, we've been going through Nail Man's level. First boss, I recommend he's your. I recommend he be your first boss. There's a couple of other bosses you can go after first, but Nail Man's a pretty good bet to go after first. Um, you know, decent length so far. You know, this is average Mega Man length. Eventually, we're going to reach a boss store, and you'd think that's the end of the stage. It's time to fight the boss and move on. It's not. The one complaint I have about this game, I've had I've had the complaint since the very, very beginning. The stages are too long, and the checkpoints are too <clears throat> spread out. I mean, I obviously, I get what they were going for. 
with the um, with the one checkpoint in the middle, but with stages that are this long, it, it doesn't make that much sense. I think Easy Mode fixes that by adding some more checkpoints, but definitely the Wily Castle I know for a fact, and the Wily Castle has more checkpoints than in in Easy Mode than compared to Original Mode or Into Death Mode. But in Original or Into Death Mode, it's just the checkpoints are way too far apart. And the stages are way, way too long. Some of them anyway. Some of them are really, really fast, but they're really, really fast because they have a very, very demanding gimmick. Like Rainbow Man. We'll be getting to him next time. Anyway. We've been going about the we've been going through the level for a few minutes now. You'd think it's time to fight an actual boss, but no, it's the mini boss. It's Hammer Man. He's the mini boss of Nail Man's stage. Fun fact, Hammer Man was originally supposed to be one of the eight robot masters of the game. Very, very early on, I saw trailers where Hammerman was one of the eight bosses, but at some point during development, they decided to switch over to Nailman and make him the boss. And Hammerman, just the mini boss, since you know they already had the asset and some of the animations, why, why wasted? <clears throat> they have, uh, they have a, a good explanation in the wiki for Mega Man Unlimited, saying that Hammerman used to be the main robot master of this area, but um, because he was so dumb, Nailman was able to ascertain control and be like the boss robot master of the area while Hammer Man was just like subservient. It's pretty cool. By the way, I apologize for my voice. I am just getting through. I'm, <clears throat> I am just getting over a sore throat, and you know, I didn't want to put this off any longer than I had to since I was sitting on this footage for a while. Pretty much right after I finished Mega Man 10, I played through Mega Man Unlimited and started editing immediately. But then I got sick, so I couldn't record immediately, so... This would have been out like a few weeks ago, but... I didn't want to sit on this any longer, so I decided to just go through it with my voice. Got some water here, though, so I'll... I'll be alright. I hope. No regrets, though. Ah, refreshing. <clears throat> but yes, as you can see, we're still not done with Nail Man's stage. My one complaint. The stages are way too fucking long, and I get it. I really do, I really get what they're coming from. They wanted to pack as much in as possible, and that's a noble, noble thing to want to do. But some of these stages do overstay their welcome. A couple of the Wily stages do overstay their welcome. The second and third stage definitely overstay their welcome. <clears throat> But yeah, how about that plot, huh? Nice, interesting plot, and you know, nothing revolutionary. For now, anyway. Wily's been kidnapped, he's pretending to be a good guy again, or probably is a good guy again. Classic stuff. Originally, this game was supposed to be called Mega Man 10. This, this game had started development way before Mega Man 10 was even a thing by Capcom. This was supposed to be originally called Mega Man 10. But, you know, they had to change it once Capcom started calling their Mega Man 10, Mega Man 10, so... This team's Mega Man 10 became Mega Man Unlimited. It's funny, because... Mega Man 10 is all about... A prototype... Robot virus, and this game is also about... A robot virus, so... Go figure. You know... Great minds think alike. Anyway... First boss, Nail Man. I don't do a super great job with him, but... He's not that difficult. He's pretty pretty hands-on and he has a not, not a complicated pattern but it's a, it's a pretty demanding pattern that you have to remember a lot of stuff about basically he's always gonna start off by striking up a nail shield it's gonna rain down some nails at you and then he's either going to do what he just did where his body dislocates from his arms and legs and tries to ram you or he's going to fire off the pieces of his nail shield either one at a time or all at once. If it's one at a time, you just have to time it so after the first nail flies at you, you just, you know, you jump over and the second nail will fly high and then the third nail will fly low and the fourth nail will fly high and that way you can very easily avoid them. Um, if he fires them all at once, just jump when he, when he actually fires them at you, not much to it. If he decides to dislocate his body and try to ram you with it, um, you're just gonna have to wait, because unfortunately the nail shield will stay on, and you're just gonna have to have to tough it out until he decides to do something else that actually gets rid of the nail shield long enough for you to do some damage. He's not that tough, but he does do a lot of damage, be careful. I did 
not do a great job of him here. Overall, not that bad. Pretty good for a first boss, kind of demanding for a first boss, but really, compared to the other options, he's... You know, I mean, the, the next robot we're gonna go after, Tank Man, he's also pretty de pretty demanding robot master fight. He's also pretty easy because he has an even more standard pattern than Nail Man, but, you know. Either way, whichever boss you decide to go for first, Nail Man or Tank Man or even Comet Woman, they're not that difficult, but they have pretty demanding patterns. Anyway, moving on. This is a new thing. This was not in the original release. The um, the Buster Select, either original or charged. I'm showing off the Charge Buster now because I'm not going to use it during my main playthrough. The game was released without the option to charge your Buster, so I was playing without the option to charge my Buster. That being said, I didn't want to show you that you can charge your Buster if you want. You just have to select it from the main menu. You can change it in between levels if you want, so if you're having a hard time with the stage, you can go ahead and just Take Charge Buster and have a nice Charge Buster like Mega Man does in Mega Man 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and not have to worry about the annoying sound effect. That was a terrible sound effect. I don't know why I decided to do that with a sore throat. Probably not a smart idea. The point is, the sound effect doesn't bother you in this one because they actually silence it after a few seconds. So, yet another great thing about Mega Man Unlimited. Because it's made by fans, these fans know what works and what doesn't with classic Mega Man games, so. Now we're gonna jump into Tank Man's stage. Tank Man, like Nail Man, as I've been saying, as I've been rambling on, is also a good candidate for a first Robot Master. You don't have to take him on first if you don't want to, since his stage is arguably more difficult than Nail Man's stage. And Nail Man's weapon, even though I don't start using it really until the Wily Castle, uh, is extremely good. It's one of the better shield items. It's one of the better shield weapons, I should say, of the uh, the classic series. Not the best. The, the Jewel Satellite is still the greatest shield weapon of them all. But this is this Nail Shield is pretty good too. God, there's so much attention to detail in this game. I always have fun just looking at it and just not believing that this is not an official Mega Man game. I mean, I can believe it because this game gets hard as shit at points. Like there are there are a few bosses that we're going to be getting to and a couple of stage gimmicks that are really really dickish and could only have been designed designed by a fan that was making this game specifically for fans. Because even with Mega Man 9 and 10, when Capcom said they were making those games just for the fans, they were making those games for mass audiences, obviously. They couldn't just make them the most difficult platforming things in the world. You know, that, that wouldn't fly. That wouldn't, that wouldn't have sold well to their marketing team. But for this game, a free game, made by fans, labor of love for five years, yeah, they're gonna throw in some really hard shit in it. Because why not? The people that are going to play this are going to be the kind that are into that. Like me. And there's just... There's just a lot of creativity behind this. Like, you saw the Mets so far. Like, that's not that's not a thing a lot of the Mega Man fan games do, is come up with new versions of Mets. You know, some, some of them do, obviously. I'm not saying none of them do it except for this one, but... Coming up with brand new versions of Mets, the, the Mets that stand on top of each other, these ones that are exclusive, these ones in Tank Man stage that are on the treads, new versions of Sniper Joes, it's... It's great. It's just... It's a real treat to play this game at the end of my, uh, my run-through of the classic Mega Man games. Speaking of which, I cannot believe I am finally done. With all the classic Mega Man games. Obviously, at this point, I haven't yet done my um, my look at all the classic era Mega Man games that I'm not going to play, slash retrospective video essay thing. But this is it. I mean, after this, I can just get to work on that and just do that for a while and 
start playing through some other stuff that's not Mega Man, which would be exciting since it's been, what, like two, two, three years since I started this channel? Just to start this channel and start playing through all the Mega Man games. To finally be done and to be at one of my favorite Mega Man games that isn't an official licensed Mega Man game is... It's really rewarding. And it makes me really happy. We're still on Tank Man stage. <clears throat> Once again, my complaint, these stages are too fucking long. Because I'm not a jokey Let's Player that's just editing the funny parts down, I'm just doing commentary, doing a basic walkthrough, telling you what I think about this. Gotta watch through all the stage. And again, I get why these stages are long. It's just... At some point, they do start overstaying their welcome. Thankfully, the next stage that we'll be going after is actually pretty short. Speaking of which, let me tell you something about the next stage. And about this game in general. Uh, some of the tracks have changed since the original release. When the original game came out, uh, the stage theme for Comet Woman, Rainbow Man, and the first stage of the occupied Wily Castle were completely different than what they are now. And you will be hearing both versions of the track when we get to those respective stages. So up next, when we go to Comet Woman, you're gonna be hearing both the original track for the Comet Woman stage and the alternate new version of the track for Comet Woman stage since the kindly Mega Phil X has allowed us has allowed its players to pick between the original soundtrack and the alternate soundtrack. As for Tank Man himself, as I said before, he's even more basic than Nail Man. Basically, every other time that he launches himself like this, he's not going to actually go all the way to one to the other end of the uh, of the arena. He's going to go to where you are, start backing up, fire a cannonball at you, then do what he's been doing, which is just firing two missiles of different speeds and a cannonball that explodes on contact. Just basically do what I'm doing. Just don't, There's no easy way to actually explain it. It's just don't be all the way at one end of the screen, keep lobbing shots at him when he's shooting, and eventually he'll go down. It's not much to him. He's even more basic than Nail Man, but he also does a lot of damage if you mess up, so, you know. His stage is also not that easy, like Nail Man's stage. His and Nail Man's stage are two of the longer stages of the game, not the longest stages of the game. As, as you'll see. But two very long stages. So, pick your battles. If you want easy bosses, but tough stages, Nailman and Tank Man are your best bets for first boss. Anyway, as I said, it's time to listen to the original theme and the alternate theme of Comet Woman's stage. So, I'll see you when that's done.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed listening to both versions of the Comet Woman theme. They don't sound that radically different from each other, but, you know. Apparently, people complained about the original Comet Woman theme, which is why Mega Phil X decided to go back to the drawing board and redo the theme. I don't think there was any need for that. I like the original track a lot, but, you know. The new version of the track is just fine, too. So, in the end, what really matters, it all turned out good anyway. <clears throat> Ah, man. My throat doesn't hurt, but it does... I do get sore talking. Whatever. I'm gonna keep pulling through. I've sat on this footage long enough. And it's time to put it out there one way or another. Shitty as the commentary may be, at least the gameplay is okay. Not great, but okay. By the way, those, um, these things, those, those, blah, the walls, the, the thing walls protecting the stuff that you want to get can be destroyed with the uh, Tank Man's weapon. Also, Tri Nitro Man's weapon. But we won't be going out of Tri Nitro Man for a while. Nice change of pace from both Nail Man and Tank Man stage. Comet Woman's stage does not have a mini boss, and it's also pretty short. We're actually almost done with it. There's like two more screens, I think. Like two or three more screens, and then that's it. The stage only went on for a few minutes, and. If you want to pick a good first stage, then Comet Woman is the way to go. But if you want easier bosses, then Nail Man and Tank Man are the way to go. Not that Comet Woman is an especially tough boss, but compared to. Nail Man and Tank Man. Oh, fuck. Fuck that up. Um, compared to Nail Man and Tank Man, while Comet Woman does have a predictable pattern that she repeats each and every time, it's not as easy to uh, to react to and plan accordingly compared to Tank Man and Nail Man's patterns. That being said, she does follow a pretty basic pattern, which I'm going to walk through right now because we're at Comet Woman. She jumps, she fires these two orby thingies at you, then she does a comet dash to the other side of the screen. Uh, be careful of the residue shock waves of the comet dash, they can damage you. As for those residual blob things that she shoots at you, after a while, they're either gonna come at you from the top and the bottom, or from the left and right. Uh, you cannot shoot through them, so that's why some of the shots are going to, you know, bounce back. You just keep firing though. It's kind of a war of attrition, kind of not. There's a lot of movement involved. Be fast, be careful. The ground is ice, but there is low gravity, so you can't jump really high in this version of the fight anyway. In the rematch, you actually have to deal with the fact that you won't be able to do any uh, any high jumps. Also, during the, uh, the perfect version of the fight and the uh, Omega version of the fight, which I'm going to walk through in the extras video, there is no, um, no lowered gravity. There's also no ice, so... You know, you win some, you lose some. Point is, take advantage of the uh, low gravity, be careful of the ice. Slip and slide past Comet Woman's attacks, and eventually, you'll take her down. She is weak to Tank Man. Oh, by the way, you'll be seeing all the weaknesses for all the Robot Masters... ...in the boss rematches. By the way, I'm gonna take the time now to show you... ...what happens when you revisit stages. Can you refight bosses? The age-old question. No, you can't. This game finally brings back another female robot master, but doesn't let you refight bosses at the end of the stage. Just let you exit stages. 
And unlike in other Mega Man games, it actually gives you the, the actual teleporting animation, which is pretty cool. Actually, if you're under stuff, like lives or health or stuff, the teleporting Mega Man does collect them as he leaves, which is pretty cool. It's a small thing, it doesn't mean anything, but it's, it's, it's a nice, it's just a nice little thing. Anyway, to wrap up this part, we're gonna go after Jetman. These Robot Masters all have their own serial numbers. Uh, you're going to be seeing them during the credits. It walks through, you know, all these what all these Robot Masters are. You know, like Comet Woman is... Or Tank Man, I should say, is like the Master of Artillery, and... Jet Man, I think, is Master of the Skies or something, so... You also walk through what their serial numbers are. They're, S, they're SWN something something. Which I think is Special Wily number. I'm not sure if it stands for Special Wily number or not. I didn't actually check. I didn't actually do that much research on this. Which is not like me, but you know, like I said, I was I've been sitting on this fish for a while. I just wanted to get it out there, finally. And gush about how good this game is, because it's it's so good. I mean you've been seeing it now for almost half an hour. It looks so official. It looks so much like this is a real, honest-to-God Capcom game. The team that made this said, basically, that their mission statement was to make this feel like Mega Man 9. I mean, this is better than Mega Man 9. It's it's more fucking hard than Mega Man 9. It's, it's not... Let's not be crazy here. It's not, you know, mass audience appeal like Mega Man 9, because Mega Man 9 is actually pretty easy. This is really hard, but this... This looks like something the Capcom themselves would make. This is why I love this game so much. Nothing feels that crazy or out of place. Everything that you that we're that we're dealing with here is is pretty standard and pretty expected for a Mega Man game, for a classic era Mega Man game. And the crazy stuff that they do end up throwing in makes sense for the lore. It. It's really good. This is this is a great game. This is fantastic. Everyone should download this and everyone should play it at least once. Much like stages in most other Mega Man games, there are alternate paths. Uh, there weren't any alternate paths in Nail Man stage. There is an alternate path in Tank Man stage that we're not going to be exploring for a while because we need a weapon from a boss that we're not facing in this part. And Comet Woman doesn't have any uh, alternate paths, but Jet Man does. And this alternate path is actually going to lead us to our first special letter, just like in previous Mega Man games, specifically Mega Man 5 and 6, with the uh, the beat letters and the Mega Man 5 letters from Mega Man 5. Um, this game has four letters. Y-O-K-U. Yoku. Collect the four letters and you will receive a special reward that I'm not really going to try and hide because there's no point because this game's been out for years. Even if you never played it, I'm going to spoil it for you anyway. Sorry. There's a secret ninth robot master called Yoku Man, and to unlock his stage, you have to collect the four letters. Your reward for these letters is not a special, awesome, game-breaking power, not immediately anyway. It's a brand new stage. A brand new stage with a brand new robot master who has a brand new power with a unique weakness. It's great. It's wonderful. And the first Yoku letter is there. You need to have Tank Man or the Tri-Nitro Blast which is a weapon we'll be getting next part from Try Not Man himself. Uh, you cannot get to this path without that stuff. And they make you work for this letter in particular. This this letter is not easy to get. There's, you have to go through a gauntlet of, of bullshit and, and enemies and, and bombs raining down from the sky and things coming up from the bottom of the screen. It's, it's very difficult. Which is funny because the actual normal path that you take which we're going to see right now. It's very short. It's only like a couple of screens and it takes like 20 seconds to get through or 20 to 30 seconds to get through. They make you work for those fucking letters. They're all hidden real well. And even the ones that aren't, you know, make you use your powers and... They just really make you work for that special stage. And that special stage is not easy. It's not a cakewalk. That original stage that you unlock later on, that is... That's one of the most difficult stages of the game. In fact, it's, it's probably the most difficult stage of the game. I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. It is the most difficult stage of the game. Even the Wily Castle stages aren't as hard as as the gauntlet that you hit, that you have to go through in Yoku Man's stage. 
That stage is just insane. And we'll be covering it soon. But yeah. Still going through Jetman stage. Once again, stages do tend to, for the most part, overstay their welcome. After a while, you just do want them to be done. But I can't really complain about the fact that they just wanted to give you more to do. More bang for your non-existent buck because it's free, but, you know, at some point you just want these stages to end so you can move on. Also, this mini-boss is a fucking jerk. Time to fight on top of two bottomless pits with spikes. I mean, what was the point of those spikes? Those are bottomless pits. If you fall down them, that's it. Well, okay, I guess it's not it, because you get beat the bird. But you can also get those uh, shock absorber things, so... Yeah, what's the point of putting those spikes there? It's just it's mean. Whatever. I'm rambling. We're almost done. It's time to fight Jetman! He has two weaknesses. Comet Dash and the Water Cannon. A water Cannon is something we'll not be getting for a while. But Comet Dash is his main weakness. He is... He's not that, he's, he's not that hard. I mean, I, I, don't do a good, I don't do a good job in this part. And I do end up resorting to using the Comet Dash. But in reality, he is very fast. But it is a pretty predictable uh, pattern with... Just a few basic variations. He shoots missiles, he flies, he either shoots another missile at you or drops bombs. Sometimes he switches to one side of the screen to the or the other to try and throw you off. But you can see him do that, so it's not that difficult to predict what he's actually going to do. The charging kind of, charging when he lands on the ground kind of pushes you back a little bit, but as long as you're holding in the direction you want to jump in, then you're not gonna have a problem with jumping over him. Anyway. That's it for me. We have a cutscene coming up, so I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, Rock, I'm glad you're here. I ran a few more tests. And quite frankly, I've never seen anything like this. It seems some kind of virus, similar to RoboEnza, but far more potent and powerful, is rewriting the programs of all these robots. That's why they're so hostile. I knew I recognized them from somewhere. I gotta stop them. Be careful, Mega Man. This virus... It even seems to be transmitted by simply being in contact with the infected robots. Strange. He's defeated four of them so far. He still hasn't shown any signs of infection. Curious. <laughs>